In this webcast, we're going to take a look at those aromatic heterocycles that are known as the nucleobases. These are the things that attach as N-glycosidic linkages to the sugar ribose. And these nucleobases come in two forms, purines and pyrimidines. It's useful for you to think about, maybe even go ahead and draw out the structure, the footprint of these purines and pyrimidines. The purines are six-membered rings that have these two nitrogen atoms fused then to a five-membered ring, also with two nitrogen atoms, in the positions shown here. Now, I'm not expecting you to memorize the structures of these bases, but I think it's useful if you would go ahead and draw these structures out, because working through this will help you to see the molecular details and understand the differences, say, between the purines, pyrimidines, and then within the purines, the adenine and guanine. The nitrogen that's attached with its N-glycosidic bond is the nitrogen that's in that position there. And this part of the adenine and purine, uh, sorry, the adenine and guanine are constant. So I can draw these two structures up to this point because the two are identical at this, up to that point. So there's a, exactly the same structure. And where they differ is in this right hand ring. In the case of adenine, it's a fully aromatic ring. We can put the six pi electrons of the ring there. And there's an NH2 at the position at the top. That's going to be important because nature distinguishes A and G by the presence of that functional group. So in the case of G, there's a very complementary functional group. It's an oxygen of a carbonyl. And this is a hydrogen bond acceptor, as we'll see, whereas the amino group is a hydrogen bond donor. Very easy for the distinction of those two functional groups to be made. Every time a carbonyl group is added to the ring of these uh, these nucleobases, then one of the ring nitrogens becomes an N3 nitrogen. And so here we had an N2 nitrogen, and now we're going to make this an N3 nitrogen by adding a hydrogen. Guanine also has an amino group in this position, and so that's the complete structure of guanine there. Adenine is easy to remember. A for aromatic. That ring is aromatic. And over here we have um, a ring that has more functionality to it with this N3 nitrogen that's present. The pyrimidine footprint is uh, one that you might be uh, familiar with. We had mentioned it previously when we talked about heteroaromatic structures. That's the basic pyrimidine uh, footprint, two nitrogen atoms that are meta-linked. It's this bottommost nitrogen, which is going to form the N-glycosidic bond. And all of the different pyrimidine nucleobases have this same basic footprint. And so I'll go ahead and draw them for each. And again, I would encourage you to, I think drawing the structures out will really help you to focus on bond by bond, atom by atom changes in each of these nucleobases. So that's the pyrimidine footprint. And in the case of cytosine, what we have is an amino group in this position. And it's going to be compared to the carbonyl group that is in the case of thiamine. Thiamine is found in DNA only. Uracil is found in RNA only. And both thiamine and ur uracil are identical in their functionality, except for the presence of a methyl group, which we'll see in just a moment. Both of these have carbonyl groups in this position. And in fact, all three of these have carbonyl groups in, in that position. The presence of that amino groups me means that we're going to keep this nitrogen N2. And there's a double bond over there. Uh, in the case of thiamine and uracil, there's simply a double bond on the left-hand side of the ring. And finally, the difference between thiamine and uracil will be the presence of this hydrogen versus methyl group. And that actually is an important distinction. It allows the um, nature, which has repair mechanisms, to distinguish whether this is a base that belonged or came from um, uh, DNA by the presence of that methyl group or the presence of a hydrogen atom, it knows that this goes into RNA. And it's possible, actually, for, for cytosine to undergo hydrolysis, having this N nitrogen to carbon bond 
transform into a carbonyl group. And notice that if cytosine transforms this position into a carbonyl group through a hydrolysis reaction, the loss of ammonia, it will look exactly like uracil. And so nature knows that if it sees a uracil in DNA, it came from cytosine, and it needs to replace that uracil in DNA with a cytosine. So hydrolysis, just once again to remind you, hydrolysis takes cytosine to uracil, loss of ammonia. Nature has a repair mechanism that recognizes a uracil in DNA and transforms it back into cytosine. It replaces that uracil in DNA because it knows it's not supposed to be there with a cytosine. All right, so those are the structures of the nucleobases. And uh, here they are nicely drawn for you, and they're in your notes. Um, and so, again, I would suggest you go ahead and copy them. You could imagine with Schmo, you'd be able to look at these in great detail and understand some of the characteristics of these. Of the five bases that are present, so then three are both in RNA and DNA, and then there's this distinction that I mentioned before. We can put those N-glycosidic linkages onto the sugar. We end up with the structures that are shown here. There'll be a hydrogen or in the two prime position, or if we're dealing with uh, DNA, uh, a hydroxyl group if we're dealing with RNA.